presentation and I'll spend a few minutes to share our work on non-esterified fatty acid uh, and the risk of developing congestive heart failure. So my disclosure here received funding from the NIH, uh, Novartis, Alliance Potato Research and Education, and U.S. High Bush Blueberry Council. So here's an overview of my talk. Uh, I'm going to briefly orient the audience uh, uh, on non-esterified fatty acid and followed by uh, the role of total non-esterified fatty acid and the risk of heart failure and point out some limitation and some caveat by studying total non-esterified fatty acid and transition to individual non-esterified fatty acid and the risk for heart failure and conclude my talk. So what are non-esterified fatty acids? They're basically a carboxylic acid not attached to any compound such as uh, glycerol. So here an example of uh, a non-esterified fatty acid. <clears throat> Uh, they have various lengths uh, from 14 to more than 20 plus, and they have a, de a separate degrees of uh, saturation. So you can have the unsaturated, monounsaturated, polyunsaturated, and the saturated with different configuration. In blood, they circulate uh, attached to uh, albumin, and the they are mainly uh, provided by hydrolysis of triglyceride from adipose tissue uh, and to a lesser degree from food or phospholipid. They are a good source of energy for the tissue, in particular the myocardium and the brain cell, which utilize fatty acid for ATP generation. So in the case of the heart, 70% of ATP uh, generate from fatty acid. A small portion of non esterified fatty acid could be uh, generated by de novo lipogenesis. So if somebody have a high carbohydrate uh, diet, they can be polymerized acetyl-CoA to uh, form non esterified fatty acids from shorter chain 14-0 to uh, 16 uh, chain. <clears throat> so in total, the sum of non esterified fatty acid in blood is a balance between the lipolytic factors, such as the catecholamine natriuretic peptides, and the inhibitory factor of lipolysis, such as insulin antiponectin. So the modifiable external factor would be exercise, a type of diet, uh, whether you drink alcohol or not, or whether your protein uh, is high in concentration in your diet. So on the resting condition, about 80% of non esterified fatty acids are transported to the liver for generation of ATP uh, or storage uh, as triglyceride or diglyceride after re-esterification. So uh, what do non esterified fatty acids do in terms of biologic function? Uh, they can impair uh, insulin signaling in skeletal muscle. Uh, which could lead to development of type 2 diabetes. They can also impair insulin secretion from the pancreas. Uh, they can promote hepatic gluconeogenesis, in particular through R-chain uh, EFAS. And a greater accumulation can cause lipotoxicity. Uh, it, they can increase the activation of the protein phosphatase 2C, which could lead to apoptosis. Uh, they can impair endothelial function and modulate inflammation. So many of these factors are relevant for the cardiovascular uh, disease. So in a nutshell, the schematic, um, so you can see on top that lifestyle factor can inhibit the production and concentration of NIFAS in serum. Uh, metformin will be an, an example. Uh, so elevated NIFA would lead to reduction of AMP kinase, uh, which would decrease fatty acid oxidation and increase lipid accumulation in form of triglyceride, diglyceride, which could cause lipotoxicity. And lipotoxicity could directly lead to uh, heart failure development or via hepatic insulin resistance to the development of type 2 diabetes and downstream uh, the consequences of either AFib or direct development of uh, heart failure. What do we know about uh, the role of total non-esterified fatty acid and heart failure risk. 
So I'm going to first share our experience from the cardiovascular health study, which is a prospective study of nearly 6,000 U.S. adults, 65 years and old, from four different regions, Forsyth County, North Carolina, Washington County, Maryland, Sacramento County in California, and Pittsburgh in Pennsylvania. Uh, the participants will follow annually from 1989 through 1999, and since then, uh, annually through telephone contact for the survivor. So not a certified fatty acid uh, will measure uh, at the University of Vermont, Dr. Uh, uh, Ross Tracy, using the Waco enzymatic method. And the fasting blood sample were available on 4,700. They were drawn between 1992 and 1993. And the intraassay coefficient of variation is pretty good, 5%. So here are some of the characteristics of the cardiovascular health study. The average is 75 years, uh, body mass index around 27. Um, the women, they tend to have more non esterified fatty acid than men um, and so forth. And I mentioned the diabetes, you can see the prevalence of diabetes is much higher in people with higher uh, concentration of uh, non esterified fatty acid. So what do we know, what do we learn? Uh, about non-esterified fatty acid and the risk of uh, heart failure. So uh, here, uh, from the Paris perspective study, um, you can see that there was a 73% increase of hypertension comparing the 90th percentile with the 10th percentile of participant uh, fatty, uh, non-esterified fatty acid. And this is multivariable adjusted. So uh, in terms of type 2 diabetes risk, the atherosclerosis risk in community study in the U.S. show um, a 60% increased risk of developing type 2 diabetes compared to the lowest quartile. And if you analyze as continuous, a 25% increased risk of diabetes per uh, standard deviation of uh, NIFA, which is 0.14 gram per liter. And these are multivariable adjusted. So here among uh, Pima Indian, you can see on this graph, the triangle uh, uh, participant with the 90th percentile of NIFA and the circle are those below the 10th percentile. So definitely elevated risk of developing diabetes with uh, increased accumulation of non certified fatty acid. So um, our study in the cardiovascular study, uh, health study show the same thing, that a 63% higher risk of diabetes in the third quartile compared with the first quartile in multivariable adjusted model. So what about heart failure itself? So here, the cubic spline here showing a linear uh, stepwise relation between uh, non esterified fatty acid and development of atrial fibrillation. Uh, excuse me, I misspoke. I meant atrial fibrillation, which is a major risk factor for heart failure. So, uh, when it comes to heart failure itself, uh, broken down in tertile, here you can see the dotted uh, line on top. It's a higher tertile, highest tertile of non esterified fatty acid. They have the higher rate of developing heart failure compared to the lower and the middle tertile. In CHS. So um, here again, a uh, similar pattern model as a uh, continuous variable in the cubic spline. You can see a fairly linear uh, relation between non esterified fat, fatty acid and incident uh, heart failure. So, what are some of the limitations uh, on studying total non esterified fatty acid? So in blood, there are more than 30 uh, individual type of non esterified fatty acid. Some may have uh, opposite effect, lowering, lowering risk for some and increasing risk for other. So when you put together, they may be cancel uh, themselves, the effect of your outcome. So the effect of lifestyle intervention and treatment on non esterified fatty acid is unclear. And we learn also that the post load meaning post-glucose tolerance, uh, it's post-glucose challenge on NIFA. Um, they are a better correlate with the cardiometabolic biomarker than total NIFA by itself. 
yet the very few uh, data out there that measure non-esterified fatty acid after glucose uh, challenge test. So here, uh, just to uh, recap a little bit what happened, normal subject versus type 1 diabetes, um, after ingest, ingestion of uh, oral 75 gram of glucose, you have a spike mm -hmm. in glucose, mm -hmm. which leads to a spike in, um, in, in insulin, and then the curve of the glucose uh, goes down to normal. In type 1 diabetes, mm -hmm. The spike in glucose is not matched by uh, the um, production of insulin because the pancreas insufficiency. Um, so when you measure non esterified fatty acid during the oral glucose tolerance test, um, you can see the circle, normal subject. After about 90 minutes, you have the nadir where you have the lowest amount of non esterified fatty acid based on the insulin action. Uh, if you look at the top, this, the, the, the square, the diabetic subject, the response is blunted. So at 90 minutes, you still have about 400 uh, micromole per liter of non esterified fatty acid, and the obese subject are uh, intermediate. So and I show you in the previous slide that the correlation between fasting versus nadia, NIFA, and cardiometabolic uh, factor is drastically different. And you have a better correlation, let's say, for body mass index, um, correlation coefficient 0.48 versus negative 0.5, and so forth. So adiponectin, negative 0.4. Uh, beta cell function 0.41. So whereby if you look at the left column here, uh, you don't see um, any meaningful correlation uh, when it contrasts to the post-load uh, non-esterified fatty acid. So what can we learn or what have we learned from the individual non-esterified fatty acid? Um, first of all, how do we measure uh, those? We use the gas uh, chromatography uh, Tufts University lab, Dr. Lichtenstein, and um, there's an internal control um, where C17 is added to every sample, and there's an external a standard of 38 different uh, fatty acid, and there's a low and high control, so that it makes sure that uh, everything is correct. So here's an example of a chromatogram of the standard sample with 38 different uh, fatty acid. So <clears throat> to the left, the time, uh, the shorter chain, eight, and to the extreme right, the longer chain, like uh, uh, a DHA, 22, six, and three. So the coefficient of variation uh, is pretty good if the individual NEFA is uh, at least 5% present in blood, so 0 0.5 to 4%. Uh, intermediate, 1.8 to 10% if it's uh, one to um, five molar and a little bit uh, less uh, grossy when the fatty acid is only in trace amount in blood. So here's a, a snapshot of all category of individual 35 individual NIFA. Uh, top left, you have the saturated one uh, from 10 0 to 24 0. And you're familiar with the palmitic 16 0, with the stearic 18 0. Uh, that you get the palmitic and palm oil. Uh, the MUFA in green here to the top right, uh, the oleic acid from olive, um, and you have the polyunsaturated N6 in the middle uh, over here, uh, and then the polyunsaturated N3, uh, the EPA, DHA, you learned from the previous lecture on uh, LDL reduction, and the bottom here, you have the different trends. So the chromatogram can tell you which of these 35 individual non-esterified fatty acid is available. So here, just a check of the data, which one are more frequent. So the palmitic acid, uh, stearic acid, uh, oleic acid. So um, this could be synthesized in, endogenously. So it doesn't have to be coming from the food that you're consuming, but the body can uh, synthesize this through de novo lipogenesis. 
and the uh, linoleic acid is in higher concentration. So you have a, a different uh, length of carbon, different level of saturation, uh, trans configuration, cis configuration, and uh, different concentration in molar term. So what do we know about individual NEFA and CHF risk factor? So um, here um, we show that among the 35 different non esterified fatty acids, uh, one, a two short chain uh, saturated uh, 15 0, the penta decanoic acid that you can find in uh, dairy product, where associated with 27% lower risk of developing heart failure per standard deviation, whereby the steric acid is associated with a high risk, 30% increased risk per standard deviation of steric acid. Uh, the nervonic acid was associated with elevated risk, 17%. The gamma linoleic acid was associated with borderline lower risk, about 13% lower risk. And the DHA, the docosa hexaenoic acid was associated with 27% lower risk, which would be consistent with uh, uh, clinical trial uh, data. So uh, here, uh, looking at the uh, nervonic acid in the in, in the Eric study uh, and heart failure measure in plasma, this is the phospholipid. This one is attached to a different lipid moiety, not uh, a, long, uh, a chain not attached to any molecule like triglyceride, but phospholipid. So this contrast mirror the findings of nervonic acid when it's not attached to any molecule like phospholipid or triglyceride. So there's an elevated risk of heart failure uh, attesting to some consistency. So when, when it comes to developing atrial fibrillation uh, and individual non esterified fatty acid in CHS, we also show that nervonic acid, as you recall, was associated with an elevated high risk of CHF was associated with uh, twofold high risk of atrial fibrillation. And the gamma linolenic acid uh, was associated with nearly 48% lower risk of developing AFib. So you see two uh, different non esterified fatty acids with opposite direction. Gamma linolenic uh, with lower risk of AFib, nervonic acid with elevated risk of AFib. So if you put the two together, uh, you're going to have a mixed bag of effects, which defeats the purpose. So in conclusion, uh, we show that why total serum uh, non esterified fatty acids are associated with a high risk of uh, CHF and CHS risk factors such as atrial fibrillation, type 2 diabetes, hypertension. When you broke them down into different individual non esterified fatty acids, the action are not identical. You have some <clears throat> that increase the risk, whereby other decrease the risk. In particular, nervonic acid seems to be consistently uh, increasing the risk of both atrial fibrillation and the uh, congestive heart failure. And uh, DHA was consistent with um, order trial with some reduction of CHF risk. Um, and I would end with the uh, funding at acknowledgement to the uh, NIH grant, the CHS participant, and um, my uh, research team and colleague, uh, Dr. Bukama at the BI, who's the co PI on the grant, my colleague at Tufts at the University of Vermont, uh, University of California, San Diego, University of California, San Francisco. Uh, David Sisko, because New York Academy of Science and a statistician at the University of Washington and Stanford. So I'm going to stop here and see if you have any questions for me. Thank you for your attention.